shark attacks. With summer coming, we all think about them. And when the surf's up, I wonder if the precautions we've all heard about are fact or fiction. Like, do dogs really attract sharks? Are sharks kept away by dolphins? And should you be in the water around urine or blood? So I've decided to put some shark avoiding tips to the test. I've got a dog, I've got some blood, the dolphins are on standby. We're going in there to see what happens in a pool full of potentially woman-eating sharks. We've come to SeaWorld, where director Trevor Long has kindly agreed to help me in my endeavour. This is home to some of the largest sharks in captivity in the world. Wow, what's that one? Is that a woman-eating one? That's a woman-eating shark. That's a tiger shark. Of the three main shark species known to kill humans, this tank holds two. The tiger and the deadly bull shark. Trevor, what have I got myself into? <laughs> well, when you spoke to me on the phone, I thought, Jesus, does this girl know what she's doing? For test number one, I'll need urine, that's easy, and blood. There it goes. My life's blood. <laughs> Ready for the sharks. Test two requires one dog. Well, we do realise we can't use a real dog, so meet Rufus. <laughs> the dolphin test number three has taken a bit more thought. Well, we've spoken to the dolphin trainers, and for this experiment, what we're thinking of doing is uh, putting you in the water with the dolphins and then introducing this nine-foot shark. <laughs> How do you think they'll react? Well, we've never done this before, um, so it's going to be very, very interesting. No getting out of it now. Tomorrow, we're all swimming with the sharks. Dawn, feeding time for sharks. And our sharks haven't eaten for two days. You getting nervous? Just a little. A little nervous? Just a little nervous. You do realise I only got my dive certificate two weeks ago. I can't actually believe my first ever free dive is going to be in a shark pool, <laughs> surrounded by my own blood. <laughs> Whose stupid idea was this? Here goes. For our experiment, we're using an animal behaviour research technique. We'll score the number of shark approaches in a three metre radius over a 10 minute period. We're getting a control score of normal shark traffic first. Then we'll introduce the urine. Five minutes into it, it would appear that uh, Jonica's urine has frightened the sharks. But now it's my turn to be frightened. There goes the blood. Nice and visible. For a while, nothing. But then... They're, they've picked up this smell and they're trying to find something that's bleeding. They are definitely circling. But the blood soon dissipates and my time's up. There's some very interesting results there. The urine, they approach just exactly the same amount of times as the control, but the blood, I really thought I got a reaction. The other's got 14 and this is, this is 19 for the blood. So how does this fit with the known science? Well, we contacted the world experts from the International Shark Attack File in Florida. Like us, they found no evidence urine attracts sharks. But surprisingly, so far there's no data that links bleeding and shark attacks either. As for the likelihood your blood will attract sharks, well, while their sense of smell is good, it's not as supernatural as people think, especially for the small amounts of blood released routinely by a human. 50 to 100 metres is going to be as far as it goes, and then dilution factor is going to take over. OK, onward and upward, the dog. with a dog. A 
Apparently, it's not the smell, it's the splashing movement and bite-sized nature of dogs that's most likely to attract sharks. Well, there you go. Here we go. <laughs> well, that was an interesting reaction. But we can't fully replicate a real dog. So we also asked our experts in Florida to perform a special analysis of the shark attack statistics just for Catalyst. To their surprise, they found since 2001, furry animals were involved in one in 25 shark attacks on people. That's way over the odds. Finally, do dolphins keep sharks away? So I understand there's something special about the dolphin you've chosen for this experiment? Simon actually comes from the wild. Now, that was back in 1967, but Simon would have seen sharks. At the moment, he's one curious dolphin. But let's see how he reacts when we get this beast in the water. We're going to pull the replica shark straight past me. Will Simon protect me? Let's go. The shark. Yeah, Simon's because gone. The shark, I can't go <laughs> <Simon>. <laughs> oh, the shark didn't even get within ten foot of me before Simon took off. Just to be sure, we try again. Dolphins keep sharks away. Fiction. <laughs> Now, that's not to say dolphins don't sometimes protect people. It's just that they are not a reliable indicator of the presence or absence of sharks. That's the message we want to get out there. Don't assume that you see dolphins, there won't be sharks there. There could be. So urine won't attract sharks. A bit of blood might, but only if the shark is within 100 metres. Dogs do increase the risk of shark attack, slightly. And dolphins don't keep sharks away. Well then, what does attract sharks? The sharks are more interested in fish. We are not on their food chain. In truth, shark attacks are so rare, you're twice as likely to be killed by a bee. In Australia, over the last 100 years, fatal shark attacks have gone down, even though our population has gone up. That reflects the fact we've hunted some shark species to oblivion. So, unless I'm in a known shark feeding area, I won't bother doing much different, given it's the sharks who are in danger from us, not the other way around.